Okay. Dilation is a transformation that is not a rigid motion. Okay. The dimensions change. We, we kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday. We're going to focus more in on it today. So dilation is a transformation that is not a rigid motion. The dimensions change. Also, it is either shrinking or expanding of a figure. So I'm either shrinking it down or I'm expanding a finger. Figure. Hold on. Have you guys ever used shrink a dinks Do you know what those are? It's like a little thing that comes and you like, I don't know, you cut it out, whatever, and then you put it in the oven, you bake it, and it shrinks down into this like really cool little thing. That is dilation. That is what's happening. It started large and it's shrinking down. Okay? That's what's going on when you use dilation, that's an example of it. Um, so it shrinks or expands proportionally about the center point. So if I have an object like a triangle, okay, and I want to dilate this, it's about the center point. So the center still say, stays the center, it just either grows or shrinks <coughs> around this center point, okay? That's what's happening. So we're gonna take a look at some of these pictures that go with this. So it's like a shape within a shape, or a sh yeah, basically. So it's like taking this large shape and then shrinking it down, or taking a large shape and then blowing it up. Okay. Like Honey, I Shrunk My Kids and Honey. You guys ever seen that movie? Yes. Uh -huh. okay. Same type of concept. Okay. Dilation. It creates similar triangles. Remember, we talked about similar triangles yesterday. What do we know about similar triangles? There's two things that happen with similar triangles. What What do we know about their what? Aren't their angles the same? Yes, the angles are congruent. What else do we know about them? Yes, Elle. Their sides are different. Their yeah. sides are different. How are they different? How do they relate? They're similar. They're similar. They're proportional. Okay, you can set up proportions. They have the same dilation. Okay. The center of dilation is called the origin of dilation. Okay, makes sense. The origin on a graph is the center point. Center of dilation is the origin of dilation. So if something in your textbook says, what is the origin of dilation, you would have to tell me, you would have to know that that means center of dilation. A scale factor. If a scale factor is less than one, the original figure is shrinking. If it is greater than one, it's expanding, okay? That's like common sense stuff. You should, you should know that. I think you can handle that. So dilation creates similar triangles, which means the angles are still congruent, but the side lengths are now in proportions, okay? The center of dilation is also known as the origin of dilation. And the scale factor that is less than one shrinks, a scale factor that is greater than one expands. Why do I not have a scale factor of one? What, what would that mean? That's the same. Yeah, so there's no reason to dilate something and have it stay the same. Okay, dilation. Just, just example with pictures. It's still got the same definition up there. Okay, Dilation is the shrinking or expanding of a figure with each side shrinking or expanding proportionally about the center point. So, how do I know which of these two um, rectangles or which of these two squares is the original square or original rectangle? Um, on the square, the yellow one has the hash marks. But so, is that original or non? Non-original. Non -original. Okay, so you're going to have to apply information that we learned from last chapter and read it off of that. So, here I have this green rectangle, rectangle A, B, C, D. And it maps to rectangle A, B, C, D that is inside of it. Is that shrinking or expanding? Shrinking. Shrinking. Okay, and then we can figure out what the dilation is because what we can do to figure out the dilation is we figure out what the length of this side is to the length of that side and I set up my proportion. That's my dilation. So, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units. This is one, two, three, four, four units. So what would my proportion be? What? No. You take your new mapped one and you put it on top. Yes, 
And the reason you do that is because we clearly can see that it's shrinking. So if it was 8 over 4, I would get 2, right? Is it expanding? No, it's shrinking, which means my dilation has to be less than 1. So that's how you can remember what order it goes in. I always put my new one over top of my old. So I get 4 over 8, which reduces to 1 half. Did it shrink? Yes. That makes sense. Okay? Over here, is this expanding or is this shrinking? Expanding, expanding because the green's my original. 1, 2, 3 units here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units here. So what do I do to set my proportion? 9 over 3. 9 over 3 reduces to 3, which means I have expanded because my dilation is greater than 1. Okay? So order matters. Order is very important throughout geometry. Order matters here. If you set it up the opposite way, I mark it wrong because you told me the wrong dilation. Okay? So make sure you get that worked out. Any questions on that? So when it's shrinking, uh -huh. the lower number goes on top. And when it's expanding, the bigger number goes on top. Correct. Correct. Good. That's a good way to remember it. When it's shrinking, we want the smaller number on top because we want a fraction. When it's expanding, we want the larger number on top because we want a whole number. Okay? Then you have dilation. Again, it says scale factors describe the ratio of an image's length to the original figure's length. So we just talked about that. This is the exact same picture. We just talked about what the scale factor was. So what we found with this one was that the scale factor is one half. And we found that with this one, the scale factor was three. So when they ask you what is the scale factor, that's how you find it. You set up your proportion. Okay? So scale factor of this one is one half. Scale factor of that one is three. And you guys were very good at figuring that out. Okay, dilation. Here's where the center of dilation, okay? Center of dilation does not have to be the center of the figure. It doesn't have to be. That's why you have to discover where the center of dilation is happening. In both of these diagrams, the center of dilation is the center of the figure, okay? Sometimes the center of dilation might be a corner of my figure or it might be outside of my figure. Okay, we'll look at those later, but you'll be able to tell because this is easy to tell because it goes from here to large. The center stays the same. Okay, when it's not the center staying the same, like if it was dilating from this corner, then my squares would overlap like this. And you would know that the center of dilation is here because that's what didn't change. Okay, does that make a little bit sense? We'll look at that later a little bit more, but that's what that means by the center of dilation doesn't have to be the center of the figure. Okay, calculating the scale factor. We want to know what is the scale factor of this image. First of all, which image is the original image, green or yellow? Green. 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 Why do we know it's green? Because it doesn't have hash marks. Now, to figure out the scale factor, what do I need to know? Center. Not the center, what? Um, you need to get what, how, many, how long do you need to see? Good. I need to figure out lengths of some type of side. So I can figure out AB and AB. I can figure out DA and DA, CB and CB, or DC and DC. It doesn't matter which ones I figure out. I just need to figure out... Um, the length of something. So if you see here, um, let's look at A to B because it's on the bottom. This is marked at negative 1 and this is marked at 7. How many units is that? How far is that distance? 8. So this length here is 8. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This starts at 1 and ends at 5. What's the distance there? So what is my proportion? Four over, four over eight. My proportion is four over eight, which we always reduce down. So that is my scale factor. Okay, so that is my scale factor. 
on some of them we might not be able to count because they might be large numbers. What do you think we use to figure out the distance on those? What? No? No? Well, maybe. But <laughs> if I'm trying to find the length of something, the length of this, and I know that this point here is at negative 1, negative 1, and I know this point here is at 7, negative 1, what formula can I use to figure out what that length is? Distance. The distance formula. So sometimes we might have to come back and apply the distance formula because we can't count every square because they are huge numbers. Okay? So use prior knowledge to help you out. Got it? Just trying to get you to think a little. Calculating the scale factor. You can also calculate a scale factor of segments. See segment AB, segment AB. Which one was the original image? Green. Green. Yellow's the new image. So do you think this scale factor is going to be less than 1 or greater than 1? Greater, because I am expanding. What is the distance of this portion here? I think it's at 1 and negative 1, yes. It's not at 2, because 2 is like right here. And 2 is right here. So it's at 1 and negative 1. Okay? So it's 2 units. Okay? What is the distance from here to here? From 4 to negative 4. 4 to negative 4. So 8, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. So then, how do I set up that proportion? 8 over 2, good. 8 over 2, which gives me 4. So my scale factor is 4. 4 units. Okay? Last one. Rescaling an image. Okay? So this happens a lot of times in graphic design and different things like that. Okay? Where you have to scale something to fit into what you wanted to do or you a photographer photographers do this a lot. If I could talk, that would help. Okay, so it says, um, rescaling an image. Change the scale factor from 4 pixels per square to 6 pixel, pixels per square. Okay, so right now you have a square that is 32 by 20. Okay, 32 by 20. And I want to change it from 4 pixels per square to 6 pixels per square. Anybody have an idea of how I could do that? Anybody have a thought? What What's your thought? Multiplication and division. Multiplication and division? What do you mean by that? Like, because if you... Or, never mind. Never mind. I have an idea. You're going to have to have two equations then. Okay? Remember how yesterday we talked about proportions. If I am changing something... The, and they're similar figures, I now have um, proportions happening, right? Okay, so if I want to figure out what the new scale factor or what the new side length of this 20 would be, I need to set up a proportion. The original scale factor is 4. I want to go to 6, okay? So what I'm going to do is put my scale factor over top of each other like a 6 to 4 ratio. So I want to go from 4 to 6, which means I'm getting larger. So I'm putting the larger number on top, 6 over 4. And I'm going to set it equal to what? Okay, I'm going to set it equal to something over 20, because 20 relates to my smaller one, to my 4. I'm making it larger. Do you want to name this X or Y, which would make more sense? This would be Y and this would be X because I'm running and writing. So if I solve here, I now have a proportion. What's 6 times 20? 120. 120, right? Okay. What's, and then 4Y. So if I divide by 4, what does Y come out to be? 30. So my new length or my, or my new height is 30. Okay, what am I going to do to solve for x? You put 32 over x, well, x over 32. Yes, so I'm 
we're going to set up the same type of thing. 6 over 4 equals x over 32. 32 times 6 is what? 192. 192. Mm -hmm. And what is 4 times x? And then divide by 4, you get what? So my new pixel, if I want to go to 6 pixels, my new width and my new length is 30 and 48. Okay, my new height and length. And so that's how you're going to rescale an image when they ask you. You're going to use the proportion of the scale set equal to the proportion of the picture and your unknown. Does that make sense? Okay, that is what this whole thing is about. Let's do some homework. Yay.